So, it's come to light that you guys are going to need to learn about comparison operators and also logical operators. So, what do I mean by that? So, comparison is just as it sounds. It's an operator that allows you to compare one to one item to another item. So, for example, I might ask, is one smaller than seven? And the answer to that is yes, and the way to arrive at that is by using this logic. 1 is less than 7. Or by asking the computer if 7 greater than 1, like this. So I'm going to few, go through a few symbols here. Um, well, a few operators, should I call them? and explain the meaning of them. So, the first operator is this double equal sign. The double equal sign essentially asks if the item on the right, the item on the, on the left, sorry, on the left is equal to the item on the right. It does not turn them into each other. So, for example, 1 equals equals 3 is really a question of is 1 equal to 3, i.e is left equal to right. Single equal sign says that the item on the left a variable is equal to the item on the right, i.e., um, variable 1 is equal to 99, is saying to the machine that the variable named variable 1 is now or now holds now holds a value of 99 as an integer okay so that there is the essential difference between one equal sign and a double equal sign okay i'm just letting that be known just to try and get rid of confusion study that if you will or don't study it if you don't want to so for example Variable one equals oh, variable one equals ninety nine, and we can check variable one. One, we can we can use a print statement. You know, I'm not against that. Print variable one. We can use this to check it, and. I, the other thing we can do is do the comparison. So, if 1 is equal to 3, print 1 is equal to 3. If I run this, nothing will print. Now, let's try it again, but let's try it with variable 1. If variable 1 is equal to 99, then print variable 1 is equal to 99. This should work. And to prove that I haven't just assigned that variable that value, will use a different value. So we'll ask if variable 1 is equal to 72 print 
variable 1 is equal to 72, not 77. A bit of a Freudian slip there. So as you can see, this is asking uh, whether one value, the value on the left, is the same as the value on the right, and not telling the machine that this variable holds this value. Otherwise, it would have executed here as well as here. But it only executed here because 99 is equal to variable 1 is equal to 99. Didn't execute here because variable 1 is not equal to 72. So there is more or less the proof of uh, the operator. Okay, we'll move on to some more. There is also the opposite of equal, asking if something is equal to. So the asking if something isn't equal to is done with this symbol, not one, with a exclamation mark followed by an equal sign. This asks the machine, is the item on the left, comma, not equal, not equal to the item on the right? If the item on the left is not equal to the item on the right, right, then boolean value true is returned. So, if, for example, one not equal to, but not equal to, free, print, one is not equal to free. And there we are. So, this asks the question, is one not equal to three is one not equal to three yes one is not equal to three so we can print that one is not equal to three so we're asking is it not equal to that is the item on the left not equal to that is one not equal to three yes one is not equal to three therefore the answer to this question is one not equal to three is true one is not equal to three so we can continue and it will print one is not equal to three Okay, that's about the logic of that. The next one is greater than, so if 3 is more than 2, print 3 is greater than 2. If 2 is less than, okay, so less than Free. print 2 is less than 3. These can also be found in maths. So there's more than if item on the left is more than item on the right, then this initiates. If item on the left is less than item on the right, then this code will be executed. Okay, so that essentially is asking if the item on the left hand side is larger than with this big arrow than the item on the right then this statement is true here we're saying if the item on the left of this arrow is smaller than the item on the right then this statement is true which means this code will execute okay so if we print these out well, if we try to print these out, they will execute because they're both true in both cases. If that didn't make sense, don't worry. You can look at this code on GitHub and I'll comment all of this in and you'll see why it makes sense. So we can ask if 2 is greater than or equal to 3 or 1, shall we say. Print 2 is greater than or equal to 1. So what we're asking for is basically if 2 or if the item on the 
left is greater than the item on the right or is also the same value as the item on the right, then the answer is true. So we're asking, is the item on the left the same as or more than the item on the right? So if I re if I uh, use these, they should both be true. And just to just to prove it, I can change that value there. Change it back. I copy and paste this, and then change it back. So there, it didn't print because two is not greater than or equal to three, mainly because it's not greater than three, and it can't be equal to it because it's not free. Okay. There's the exact opposite. So there's if four is less than or equal to five, print four is less than or equal to five. Okay. As I say, if you look at this on GitHub on my GitHub, um, I'll explain it in more detail and I'll actually comment it all in so you can just go over this a second time. So here, four is less than or equal to four. Okay, and then we'll do one more that will be untrue. Three is less than or equal to two, for example. Okay, print three is less than or equal to two. It might take you a little bit of time to get your head around it, but basically what we're saying here with this symbol is if the item on the left is smaller than in value than the item on the right, or is also equal to the value on the right, then this is true. That is smaller than that. So we're saying is the item on the left smaller than or equal to the item on the right? In this case it is, so that's true. Is the item on the left smaller than or equal to the item on the right? Yes, it is, because it's equal to the item on the right. Is the item on the left smaller than or equal to the item on the right? It's definitely not smaller than two, and it isn't two either, so it's not smaller than or equal to the item on the right. So, this should actually execute. This should execute here, but this shouldn't execute. So let's run them one by one to see if that's correct. 4 is obviously less than or equal to 5, because it's less than 5. 4 is less than and equal to 4, obviously, because it is equal to itself, 4. 3 is not less than or equal to 2, hence the statement 3 is less than or equal to 2 has not been printed. 3 is not equal to 2, as it's 3, and it's definitely not less than 2, because it's more than 2. Okay? So that's basically all of the ways of comparing, um, just b basically doing numerical comparisons or you know, sometimes string comparisons can be done this way, but I mean that's that's really a more advanced concept with uh, equals and such, which I'll probably get into outside of the basics uh, tutorial. Now the next thing to go through is logical comparisons uh, sorry logical operators not comparisons don't get the two mixed up there so let's say we want to know if two conditions are met so if two is more than three and one is less than two or let's say if two is if three is more than two and one is less than two, print, ah, print, three is less than one, and also one is less than two. So this and here, before, in these if statements, we just ask one question, and if that one question was true, then this would print. Here, however, we're asking two questions. 
So, we're saying if 3 is greater than 1, first off, and 1 is less than 2, then execute this. So we're asking for two truth values and both of them have to be true, hence the and. So if this, this statement here is true and this statement here is true, this will execute. I'll actually run it to show you the execution. So it's printed out here. Now then, I'll, I'll show another. If one is more than two and one less than two, print one is more than two and less than two. Now, this is impossible. It can't be more than a number and also less than that same number at the same time. And since one of these two statements, specifically the one is greater than two statement, is not true is false, this will not execute because the and statement requires that both of these question answers are true. So both of these statements must be true in order for this code to execute. And you can see that nothing's been printed there. You see that? The same will occur if I'll just copy and paste this now. If more than one of the values is false, the same will occur. Okay, so if one is more than two and one is less than zero, we'll say. Right, it's neither of those things. So this also won't print. But the AND allows you to essentially look for more than one true value. You could actually have, so I could add on here, if 1 is more than 0 and 1 is more than minus 1 and 1 is more than minus 2, print success. All three truth con conditions met. Because now we're asking three question, three questions, and we want all three answers to be true. If all three answers are true, then we can actually execute this code. Success. All three truth conditions met. So there we are. So that's and. Now. Instead of just having AND and making it mandatory for both of these or more than two of these uh, question answers to be true, the Boolean values of the questions to be true, what if we just want one or the other to be true? So let's say if we want either one to be more than zero or one to be less than zero. And print one is more than zero or it is less than zero so basically what it is what what the computer here is saying is is this value stronger than this value is it more than this value is it less than this value now it can be either or if just one of these two question answers is true then this will succeed this code will execute so all means that only one of the two statements has to actually be true there we are it won't execute if none of these statements are true so if one less than zero or one less than minus one print one one is lesser, less than zero, or one is less than minus one. Because one is neither less than zero nor less than minus one. So neither of these values are true. So the or says, well, if this one's not true, then this one, if this one's true, we'll let it go. But if if, if 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 one of the, just as long as one of these values on either side of my or is true 
we will allow this to execute. If neither are true, then we can't. So here, because one is more than zero, even though one is less than is not less than zero, this first this first statement renders to be true. So as long as what this statement or this statement is true, this code is allowed to be executed. And because this is true, the or has been satisfied. Okay. There is one more logical operator. I don't really want to get into it. I'm tired and this is getting harder, but I will get into it. And it's probably quite a lot to take in. Feel free to take a break. Um, Rewatch. Uh, and like I said, look on GitHub at this code because it's quite complicated. But anyway, the next one is going to be not. So let's say not applies to Boolean values. It's not the same as not equal to. But um, it's a similar kind of concept. So let's say we have a variable called bool val, and bool val equals true. Okay. Let's have a look at bool val. Or well, I'll use a print statement to do it. You know, stop being lazy. So print bool val, and bool val at the moment should be true. Now, how can I make that false? Without typing the word false in, I could say not true. Okay, I could say not true. So I use the keyword not, which is not in capitals, by the way. Yeah, and then I put true in brackets. And not, whatever's inside the brackets, whatever Boolean results from the calculation in the brackets or the comparison, either a comparison can be put in brackets or a Boolean value can be put in brackets. And the not will inverse that value. So, for example, if I turn bool value to not true, bool val will now be false. Yeah? Just a, a little side note here. You can get a boolean value from a comparison. So I can say bool, I'll use up lowercase, bool val2 equals 1 is greater than zero. Now this is true, so the bool val will actually be a boolean value of true. You see how we've asked for the calculation? So bool val2 and this will print out true. Okay? Anyways, anyways, that's getting ahead of ourselves a little bit there. So let's say that we want uh, we want to uh, actually succeed if the statement isn't true so we'd like to print one is not greater than three but this will only work if one is greater than three it will only work if this is true ah but what if the inverse was true what if not the true value of that was to be printed. If not that, then one is not greater than three. So what we're essentially asking with not, or what we're saying with not, is it's something like, if I am not hot, then I am cold. Yeah? So we, see, we need to calculate if I'm not hot, we need to ask, am I hot? If I am not hot, then not hot equals true. Therefore, if cold, then I am not hot. Yeah? Or if cold, then hot is false. I dot e dot not hot is true. Yep. So I'll try and I'll try my best to kind of show that. So cold equals false. No, cold equals true. Right? Hot equals not cold 
Okay, so if we are cold, if it's true that we are cold, then it's false that we are hot. So not cold would be would be false. Okay, so let's look at the value of cold. Cold is true, and hot is not true. So yeah, basically because hot is the opposite of cold, the opposite of the state of cold will be the state of hot. So if it's true that it's cold, then it won't be hot. If it's false that it's cold, then it will be hot. So hot is the opposite of cold and it's not cold. So the true value of hot is the opposite of the true value of code. And this can kind of be replicated through Python. Anyways, I won't go into that more. You know, I'll let you guys mess around with that. And as I said, I'll put a lot more comments on here in GitHub. Anyways, thanks for watching that. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next video.